Olivia, thank you uh, for joining me today on Pop Culture Unplugged. You're so welcome. Thank I you. See you got I... the warrior queued up in the back. That's right. Perfect. Uh, you know, opportunity for you to come on. We'll talk about uh, Warrior on Netflix. Uh, how does it feel for finally for like a wider audience to get a chance to experience this show? It feels it, it it feels great. It feels both exciting and it also feels like a little anxiety inducing because I don't know if you've been following the cast efforts to really kickstart the conversation. Um, but, you know, our, our cast, we have held our own publicity junkets. We are organizing amongst ourselves to try to encourage people to like binge and double thumbs up and let people know. And so um it's 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 kind of funny that's <laughs> right. exciting especially yeah. like whoever tunes in this interview there's also a petition out there people want to see a season four so you might want to look for it on google oh. inside it i didn't I know, you, know I that know about i didn't that. know yeah. that yeah there's that's a petition out there yeah as, as the series is on netflix now what are you uh most excited about for audience to discover or rediscover when they're rewatching it again i think i'm most excited for a new audience to discover us because one thing we all noticed when we were first at Cinemax and then yeah. we moved over to HBO Max, which then became Max, is it really felt like a two to three step process for people mm -hmm. in certain territories to get it. Like they'd have to hop on ExpressVPN and pretend they were in the States and then they'd have to go through iTunes or Amazon Prime and then buy like a Cinemax subscription and then yeah. see our show. So the fact that it's on Netflix now in I'm not sure how many territories it's not fully in every territory so sorry UK Canada Australia um you know Germany we've been hearing from fans out there but for the most part it's so much more widely available to folks and I think I'm just looking forward to people who might not even know about all the challenges we've had as a show to get to air and just discovering our world and hopefully falling in love with what we've so painstakingly um, put together for everyone. As I mentioned earlier too, about the about the whole uh, thing out there to sign, you know, like the, the show has got a huge fan base when it first, when it first started airing, like people heard about it later on and they started to watch it. What do you think it's been like, like for the show, like to gain such a passion of following? It blows my mind. You know, and, and and it shouldn't because at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, it's Bruce Lee. So right. um, he comes with such a legacy and he comes with such an iconic status that I think was, is, and was, is the selling point of the show that this is something that Bruce Lee conceptualized, what, maybe f over 50 years ago and it's 50 years after his death that um, his daughter managed to, you know, push it uphill and claim a spot for it in, in, in Hollywood. So um, yeah, we're, 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 we're all really stoked. How close do you think Bruce Lee's notes were making the show? Like, uh, did you, was there anything changed or was it pretty much to the point of what he had written? You know, when we first showed up for the pilot back in 2017, um, Shannon Lee couldn't be there in person she had some um, family things she had to take care of back home here in america but she sent ahead these folders and inside the folders were bruce lee's hand drawings of his wow. concept for this show and it was like they they're amazing drawings i actually want to frame them and put them in my home um and i'm like of course he can draw too you know and yeah. he, they, they, she had photocopied um his handwritten notes like how he came up with the name Assam, which it's actually the number three in Cantonese. Like Sam is number three. And his idea was he's kind of like, I think meant to be like the third uh, child in this family. And so, you know, um, anyway, point is I've never seen the full eight page concept, but I know it was from that eight page concept where he wrote down ideas and you can see him crossing you know, crossing some sentences out, crossing some names out and renaming them something else. He talks about the Big Bill character played by Kieran Beal so beautifully. And Jonathan Tropper used that eight page treatment and really tried to stay true to what he felt the spirit on the page mm -hmm. was. Um, and the big spirit was that Bruce Lee was fascinated and specifically wanted the show set just before the Chinese Exclusion Act in the Wild West um, if you will, because he's like, 
when else would it be necessary to have hand-to-hand -hand combat? You know, he wanted it in an era where guns weren't as readily available. And, you know, when we have that joke in, in our show, right, where they have this big scrap and then finally Young Jun pulls out a gun and Assam, um, Andrew Koji actually ad-libbed this line. He said, you had that the whole time. Ugh. You know, that was, that was Andrew's idea for a button. But, you know, so we kind of play off of that and that's a nod to Bruce Lee's concept. Mm. All the characters on the show, are they all in the notes or was there anybody added extra? Do you know anything about this? Um, I think it was only Assam and Big Bill okay. who were outlined in the right. notes. Um, I believe Atoy, my character was, because she's based on the real Atoy in San Francisco history, she would have come a little earlier in the 1850s, but she captured the imagination of Jonathan Tropper and the other executive producers. So they made her um, a, a fictionalized version of the real Atoy and they made her the Sifu figure um, mm. for the Assam character. Mm. Speaking of Atoy, like I liked her. I liked, she's a like, very like complex character, intriguing. Like what drew you to this character and like how did you approach playing her for so many seasons? To be honest, um, I was... I was a little hesitant about taking a toy on. Um, it, 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 it came at a, uh, it, you know, in some ways where it came at like the perfect time, because I was like, I, I felt like there was no place in Hollywood for me, you know, like Marco Polo had come out. And as I say, it, it, it got me to Hollywood. It got me the LA agents. It felt like now I was on the playing field. Yeah you know, um, in the stadium, whereas maybe before I was in like a parking lot five blocks away trying to listen to the game on, you know, some old transistor radio. Yeah. Um, but even though once I was now in the field, I still couldn't, I didn't feel like there was a way to get on the field and into the game. Like it was still, so I, Warrior came at a time when, you know, I, I, I just wasn't sure. You know, I was like, do I take on another period piece? Do I take on, you know, um, a woman who is, you know, you know, has a, lives in sort of a stoic space, a calculating space, and um, uh, ultimately, I, I I looked at who was behind it, right? Jonathan Tropper, Shannon Lee, uh, Daniel Woodrow, um, Justin Lin, and I just trusted the caliber of folks behind it because you got to remember as actors, we don't know where our characters are going. We don't know what they've got in store for us. We don't really know what we're signing our lives for seven years away for. So mm -hmm. it's a real gamble for us to sign on, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did. Yeah. What do you think was like the biggest challenge with this character? Like, uh, did it take like any toll physically, like any toll on you emotionally when you were playing this character? I think a little bit of both, you know, mm -hmm. at different points in each season and different points in the process um you know season one I think I think just finding who she where she lives in me and uh, you know I know that sounds really like you know actory but you know it is and uh, um you know because I think if you know me Olivia in life I'm you know pretty easygoing I, I don't live in the energetic space that Atoy does and um, yeah, I think that would be like, you know, pretty intense to walk around in yeah. that energy um, all the time. So it was finding that energy in me that served her and, you know, trusting the other players on the team to help me become that character, trusting that when they put that wardrobe on, when they do that hair, when they do that makeup, you don't have to do a lot more heavy lifting. You know, you just, you just have to let all of that inform the performance and I really think it was my first scene with um Big Bill that I found something in my character that became one of like the pillars in uh where Otto lives, which is, you know, it was really fun messing with Kieran Bu that day, you know, um, our first scene together. And I was like, there's Atoy, right? She's so smart that she knows that even when she's being underestimated, she's gonna have fun with it and use it to her advantage. And that's really fun to play. What's been like the fan reaction with like you and like talking to them like about this character because they love this character. I'm really uh it means a lot to me. You know, I 
I, this is one of the first shows I've ever, I've ever done where the community support is undeniable, mm -hmm. undeniable. Like I'm here in LA right now making appearances um, on behalf of our team and on behalf of our show. We were honored for the first time ever at the Asia Society of Southern California Gala the other night. And, you know, it meant a lot that women, you know, and, and in particular Asian women were coming up to me and I don't know, just they're, 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 I could feel their energy coming at me. It was, it, I just felt their love and I felt their respect. And, you know, it, it gave me life because I, you know, we've all been so exhausted championing our show the last few weeks, but, you know, actually getting to interact with, with people and hear their thoughts and feel how much the show means to them. It just made me go, yeah, this is what, this is what we're doing it for, you know? Mm -hmm. I'll speak of the fans. Have you been approached about doing cons to meet fans for this show? Because I, I've seen people that ask you for warrior cast members. You know, you're it's funny you bring that up. You're like the third person in the last two days to ask that. We would love to do that. We've just never been asked to. We I don't know if that's something that networks are usually supposed to organize. I don't know if networks are the ones who you know, I don't know how it works. Like, do they buy us a booth and then they have to travel us down and pay for our accommodation? Like, I imagine there's like a certain investment that goes into showing up at these yeah. cons. And I don't think we know how to access that as a, mm -hmm. as a cast, because yeah. we're on our own right now. You know, any promotion you see, it's, it's, it's us right, right. self-generating, right? Hey. Hey, you never know. Somebody <laughs> might watch this interview. You might get the call in a few weeks. Who knows? We would love it. Like for whoever out there organizes a con or whatever, like we are down for it. We just, we just don't know how to access that. Mm -hmm. Um, Going back to the show, uh, the tongue wars of the, what was the atmosphere like filming uh, like those type of scenes in uh, the series? It was amazing. Like the Chinatown set hands down is one of the favorite sets for everybody. It was built from scratch in a studio lot at Cape Town Film Studios, and they built it with cobblestone streets, um, you know, historic, um, I don't know what they call it, but where it's just like the front facade. And if you open the door, it's kind of, it's obviously not a real building inside, right? Like it's not yeah. really developed inside. It's just meant for exteriors. But when the production and design teams and art departments dress those sets, it's like, they bring in dozens of extras, put them all in period piece clothing. They have real food cooking. They have real vegetables out. So it's, 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 it's sensory. It's sensory. It's like, you can smell the food. You can hear people talking. It's so nice to be outside and spread out instead of just being stuffed into these like dark studio mm. sets where you're just, you know, you have no daylight um, while you're filming. It's those are, incredible sets and then when you see whether it's like the season one long z and hopway street fight where they just yeah. rush at each other right like it gives us the space to have these really epic moments season three opening with joe taslin and andrew koji kind of locked into this we meet again friend yeah. kind of brawl right where like i don't know I, I love that one because by now we know that they're they're enemies, but they're enemies that respect each other. Mm -hmm. And I think it was so fitting to have them and Chen Tang and Jason Tobin, all the boys just out there brawling in the streets to let people know we are back. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Chen Tang. I had him on the show. What a great guy. Chen's awesome. He, yeah. he, I was asked the other day um, who is like the best casting or most like their character. And, and I, I voted for Chen because, you know, that he's, that childlike positivity yeah. that he brings to Hong where he's like, Oh, Hey guys. And like eerily smart, like you realize he has everyone's number and you know, like it's one of the favorite things for me in season two, when he brings his chemistry into the Assam young June uh, friendship and they kind of write him off as being this like goofy guy from China. And then he, is like, oh, this is what's happening. You guys have stolen molasses. You're trying to find a place to hide it. And now you're trying to, oh, I'll come. You know, yeah. like that's Chen. He's 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 smart. He's positive. He's hilarious. Awesome. Is there is there like, a, I know we've had three seasons of this. Uh, is there somebody that 
you're disappointed that you couldn't have more scenes with or you didn't get a chance yes. to work with? Absolutely. Um, Jason Tobin is one of the first to come to mind because we thought, based on the pilot, we thought, oh man, like we are thick as thieves, Ato and Young June. Like he's my best customer. We have a great rapport. Um, you know, so much of that first scene we had with um, Andrew Koji when he first comes in as a psalm and I discovered this new onion, there was a lot of ad-libbing and improv between me and Jason. So that part where I think I have a line about like his cock has its own beating heart, you know, and, and Jason goes, boom, 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 right? And then I think I thump on his chest to go with it. Like that wasn't planned. That was just us riffing off each yeah. other. And we, you know, we're such great friends in, in life that we were like, where are our scenes? Like we never really <laughs> got a scene together ever again after that. It's just, he's always at Odd Toys. You know, we're always acknowledging each other through Assam. We're always acknowledging each other's presence through other pe people, mainly Assam, you know. Um, uh, but there, there are so many casts I've just never even really had a chance to work with. I've never had a scene with Joe. I've never really, I, I've had a scene with, with um, Tom Weston Jones, um, but, I, you know, obviously I'd love more there. Um, I've never been into the Irish part of town. You, we've never seen Atoy in the pond. We've never seen, mm. we've never seen Atoy, you know, and Leary. We've never seen, um, yeah, they're, they're absolute. I, 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 I feel like I could, um, I, you know, I, I was a big fan of Happy Jack. Um, I would have, it wouldn't have made any sense, but you know, I'm like, couldn't Atoy somehow be in the Barbary coast? Like, mm. Happy Jack's formidable, you know, <laughs> yeah. played by by Nate, and he was like wonderful. He was like such a wonderful get for us. So you know, even breaking into those bigger worlds would have been so much fun and a wish list for me. If Netflix decides to do a season four, how have you guys talked about it with the cast? Like, would you jump on the opportunity right away? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, no doubt. Um, I think if we aren't, we weren't here for it you wouldn't see us pushing as hard as we are um yeah we're we're all here for it Usually. Olivia what lastly like now what do you want to tell the fans out there I know you know we're gonna have warrior fans that tune into this what do you want to, something you want to tell them oh um you know I think I just want to say thank you you know um um uh, we we wouldn't be here without so many of the fans and i want them to know that you know we 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 appreciate it like we know that they are watching we know that they are tagging us this is the second petition you know i think in our lifespan that people have started we know about the facebook fan group you know um we see the podcasts coming out we 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 get the requests we can't we, we, we get more requests than we can, you know, say yes to, um, mm. between all of us, you know, um, and yes, it's a Bruce Lee show, but if people weren't watching, if people weren't telling other people, there's only so far at the end of the day, it, it could go. Right. So I think just a big, um, thank you, especially because I know our fans know, um, how hard we're working and how you know DIY yeah. we are as a cast right now, and that we need help, so we appreciate it. Amazing, Olivia. How can the viewers uh, find you on social media? Keep up with you. Maybe who knows? We could have some news in a few weeks, few months. You never know. Yeah, uh, I'm mainly just on Instagram. Um, I'm at that Olivia Chang. I yeah, I, I think it's connected to like a Facebook page that you know um, I've long neglected, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I think Instagram is is basically, and I'm pretty, I'm I'm obnoxiously active on it right now. <laughs> amazing, amazing, Olivia. Yeah. I wanna I wanna thank you uh, for giving me a few minutes today. This was, this was great. Hopefully, we get a season four and we get you back on, or any other future project you got. A uh, future project? Yeah, um, right. Any, I'm, I'm, I'm directing right now. I'm actually, amazing. yeah, I'm actually directing. I'm on, I'm on my first um, official directing gig. I can't talk about it uh, yet. But I'm excited for people to um, I'm excited for people to see it. It's a project that 
really well they 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 approached me because they thought okay yeah we need a female filmmaker but it would also be great to have a female filmmaker who's an actress herself mm. and they knew that i had a background in journalism so it was like a perfect meld of you know all these life experiences and um you know uh uh, uh career experiences all kind of coming together and um i'm i'm really having a good time on it Amazing. We'll be looking forward to that too. Uh, Olivia, I want to thank you. This was great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.